Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. These days, we're holding our politics quite dear. Passion used to primarily refer to sex, but these days, passion for or against Donald Trump may be as strong. A Stanford study found that political kinship is a stronger bond between people than even race or religion. So it may be worth identifying careers and workplaces in which you'll likely find kindred spirits. Of course, that doesn't replace the wisdom of choosing a career that matches your abilities, skills, and interests, but political kinship is an under-considered data point. Most of the organizations I'm going to mention here employ people in a wide range of occupations, from accounting to finance to operations to human resources to governmental relations to regulatory compliance. But people passionate about their politics may particularly find their zeal beneficial, especially in lobbying, fundraising, and community organizing, as well as in those careers that I'm going to mention in each of the following sections, the sections for liberals, conservatives, and libertarians. In addition to the workplaces I'm going to mention, politicians and candidates from all parties also have staff. They also are heavily volunteer-driven, which can be a foot in the door. First, let's talk about liberals and where they might fit well and be happy. Liberals tend to view profit, and especially corporations, askance, and so are attracted to nonprofits and to government. Some favorite nonprofits among liberals are NPR and PBS, the ACLU, and the Environmental Defense Fund, as well as the Democratic, Socialist, and Green parties. Government is by far America's largest employer, with 22 million people on its payrolls and an annual budget as of the last census of $66 billion. Hundreds of agencies exist within the federal government, plus analogs at the state and local levels that are perhaps less often considered by job seekers. Agencies within government that might particularly attract the passionate liberal include environmental agencies such as the EPA and OSHA, which again often have state and local analogs. Health and human services agencies, which give taxpayer-funded cash and other benefits to low-income people. Education. Most federal education funding goes to low-performing schools, by some estimates about 85% of it. Hence, many liberals are involved in educational policy and implementation because a core liberal goal is to attempt to close the achievement gap by spending more money on low-achieving students. To some extent, that's also true of education at the state and local level, uh, especially in coastal, major coastal cities. Some companies are liberal. Icons include Patagonia, Google, Cliff Bar, Starbucks, Hain Foods, Impossible Foods, REI and Ben & Jerry ice cream. Its founders sold the company to the universe, Unilever conglomerate, but the brand still retains its liberal image. Society's mind molders are overwhelmingly liberal, so liberals will find the going felicitous at most universities, in book publishing, in Hollywood, and in the most influential news media, PBS, ABC, NBC, CBS, The New York Times, Washington Post, Time, The Atlantic, and so on. In addition to at universities, liberal intellectuals would likely feel at home in such think tanks as Brookings, the Economic Policy Institute, and the Center for American Progress, and in foundations such as Gates, Rockefeller, and Ford. Now let's turn to conservatives. This part of my talk is going to be weighted the opposite way, toward the private sector. Some industries that are well-suited to conservatives include energy, for example, Chevron and ExxonMobil, finance, for example, Citi, and Vanguard, defense, for example, Lockheed and Boeing, agriculture, for example, General Mills and Conagra, and companies based in conservative locales, for example, Procter & Gamble in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Walmart in Bentonville, Arkansas. Notable conservative nonprofits include the Young America Foundation, the Heritage Foundation, and the Media Research Center. Others are Christian in orientation, for example, Focus on the Family, the Family Research Council, and conservative churches. Then there are substantively Christian colleges such as Davidson, Baylor, and Brigham Young. Within government, conservatives tend to fit best in agencies charged with protecting the public, law enforcement, homeland security, and so on. Of course, law enforcement entities exist at federal, state, and local levels, as well as internationally. The CIA is only one of several federal agencies with international responsibility. And finally, let's turn to libertarians. For purist libertarians, government employment is pretty much out, except maybe in law enforcement, as I mentioned above. That's because protecting against aggression is among the few roles for government that most libertarians support. 
because most corporations are deeply involved with the government. Many libertarians run small businesses. For example, my fellow Psychology Today blogger and libertarian psychologist Michael Edelstein. Or they work for small companies which are less subject to governmental oversight. Other libertarians work for companies that may accept government contracts but whose work is for defense corporations or security contractors, for example, Constellus, which bought the former Blackwater. Or they may work for government-involved companies, but whose individual job is minimally controlled by the government, for example, software engineer, financial analyst, scientist, mechanic, or manufacturing worker or manager. Libertarian intellectuals may find a home in think tanks, such as the Cato Institute, Reason Foundation, and American Enterprise Institute. Economics departments at a few universities are among the few non-science departments at any university in America with a significant percentage of libertarians, notably at the University of Chicago and George Mason University. Two colleges take no money from the government, Hillsdale and Grove City. Libertarian-leaning nonprofits include the Foundation for Economic Education, the Independent Institute, and the Reason Foundation. Again, Although political affiliation is a strong bond among people, it's only one factor to consider in deciding on a career and where to work. But it's an under-considered factor, hence this little talk. Anyway, I thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko. I'd welcome your thumbs up and, if needed, a thumbs down, your comments, your sharing, the share button for social media, and subscribing to my channel. And in any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko.